if you want to know why you they feel the way they feel inside your mind, inside your brain, and generally why things stay the way we they around you. Mind Clinic now the radio program will go teach you how to deal with all different types of stress and other things we person they go through on top mind clinic. You feel talk about mind matter, we concern you directly. Or the one we know even concern you directly. Alright, we must apologize for that uh, break in our transmission here. Uh, we, we still have our guest on the line, youth development advocate and director, Way Network Africa. Oyin Oni on the line, as well as uh, Chinyeru Goldensi from Neem Foundation. Of course, on the program today, we're looking at social media and bullying. So right before that, uh, we were discussing the statistics on bullying, especially here in Nigeria. Oni. Oh. Okay, perfect. Um, great, great to be back. I was just, um, you know, touching on the statistics of uh, cyber bullying in Nigeria and saying that while we were supposed to have, you know, relevant or um, quintessential, um, you know, statistics as related to cyberbullying in Nigeria, we do not have so much because we not begin to we're not beginning to look at it as a priority or as a menace that we need to curb in our society. And while some other psychologists have gone ahead to say, you know what, cyberbullying is real. Cyberbullying is really affecting our young people. How much more can we, um, you know, how can we identify this? Let's start by identifying, um, the age group, people that are mostly victims, people that are, you know, perpetrators of the act and all of all these things. And it's just basically because of, and we realized that, you know, from the age, the things we think, they had a very high, um, in the secondary schools, they had high, they had the highest, you know, figures about 1.3% of them saying, oh, okay, um, um, I've been bullied, I, I'm a victim of cyber bully, you know. And then saying that, um, it's it, it getting more light because these young people now have access to phones, you know, like, like never before. And then most of them have to post the picture and they see their, 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 um, you know, their age, they show them and say, oh, the picture is not fine, or, you know, things like that. And yeah. it's also saying that, you know what, People that even perpetrate cyberbullying, they don't even know that they're doing this because we're not shedding so much light on, oh, just by dropping this negative comment on a picture, you are affecting the person's um, emotional state or psychological state. You know, so it's beginning to say we need to begin to shed more light, begin to um, address this issue, and we also need to figure out. And another interesting statistic is that a lot of them, when they encounter cyberbullying, don't eventually share to their parents or people around them. They just keep it to themselves. And at the end of the day, they are, you know, at the end of the day, they are um, you know, keeping this thing and letting it valuing in the psychological effect of cyberbullying. And yeah, that a child committed suicide, a young person committed suicide. And you're wondering, you know, what's going on? You know, so all of all these things, you know, eventually contribute to affecting their psychological imbalance. Yeah. You mentioned something that was quite interesting, and I think um, the listeners would also want to know. You said some people don't know when they, that they're actually um, cyberbullying another person. So how can somebody know um, that their actions is considered bullying? Do you want to just share some examples, please? Oh, absolutely. Um, so when you're trolling people over the Internet, I mean, uh, one, of the, one of the things I read, one of the things that... You know, it says, it says that Instagram is one of the social media platforms that, um, you know, that, that, um, allows for cyberbullying. When I say allows for, and I, I, interestingly, Instagram also has actions that you can report with offenses. But then, when you begin to, um, your know, name calling people over the internet, offensive name calling, spreading of false rumors about them, mm. um, you're sending them explicit messages that you do not ask for, you know, um, you know, physical threats, even physical threats. I mean, it's, it's, got, it's, got, it's gone beyond, you know, you don't like this person, you look up this person on social media, you create a fake account, and you begin to, show, you begin to, you know, um, send um, threats to the person mm-hmm. and unidentified account. You know, physical threats, offensive name calling, spreading of false rumors, receiving explicit messages in Act 4, you know, sharing explicit messages you know, that they have, they have shared without their content, you know, so you, you probably hear, um, you know, people sharing some other people's names and all of these things contributes to use cyberbullying them. And the interesting 
Offensive name calling ranks highest when it comes to cyber bullying. You know, first followed by false rumors. I mean, false rumors in, in recently had a case about two months ago, last month, of someone dying, you know, someone committing suicide because there was a lot of false rumors that it could not balance. So, all these things make up, you know, all these acts, you know, why are you on social media? Are you doing, you know, and, and the funny thing is, most times people know, people know this, that you're doing something wrong, you know, at the point where you feel that you're doing something wrong, or at the point where you feel your comments are provocative, mm-hmm. or at the point where you feel that it can affect someone negatively, it's the point where you should begin to say, you know what, why am I doing this? Why am I dropping this comment? Why, what's, what's the intention, you know? Some people do things, and, it, and this thing is not, interesting. it's not even just, it's not even just a case of young people among young people. You even see young people, celebrities, so you know, anybody, you know, because, yeah. I mean, with social media, there is this balance of power such that everybody has an account, everybody is entitled to their opinion, right? Yeah. That's fine. But then, how are you using your opinion? How is your yeah. the next best thing? Yeah, and I think that should be the very important question. How are you using your opinions and how is it affecting the other person? Uh, because a lot of the times we think, oh, we're just saying our no, well, truth. Oh, we're just calling them out because, you know, the whole cancel culture, um, yeah. just come on down and just say something. Um, but we don't understand the impact that it has on the other person who is receiving it also. So let's say, what are the things, what causes people to cyberbullying? Why are they, why are young people, why are even the older people, why are, they, why are we cyberbullying each other? Mm, mm. Interesting. Um, so cyberbullying, I mean, of course it comes from, it, it could come from different, different, different reasons. It could stand from different reasons. It could be, um, you know, you're probably cyberbullying people because you, because you have a problem with your identity, you know, you, uh, you probably have a problem with your identity, and you're just trying to, some people just, based on, some people are not even, you know, some people still need some sort of mental health, help, you know, because they don't, they have identity crisis, or, you know, you see someone that is doing amazing, you just want to just do something, just want to say something, because you feel that your life is going so amazing, you know, and it's, it's an issue because at the end of the day, while some people are not able to handle some certain level of pressure they get from social media, what I mean is this, I mean, because we know that uh, we cannot just um, certainly overlook the positive effect of social media. However, um, the negative effect of social media will be saying there's so much pressure, there's so much um, cyberbullying as well. So you see someone doing well and you're trying to just get all your life together and what stands from that is hatred. What in terms of that is dropping a negative comment because you cannot handle the pressure, you know. Mm. So that comes. Then some other people just feel that you know what, um, I'm an influencer or I have a lot of followers. I can start a movement against you. I've seen that happen sometimes where you know somebody says something to someone and then the person just starts you know call some people together because of some certain influence they have on on, on that whatever social media space it is, and you will begin to troll the person. And then multiple people are trolling just one person because of a comment. So that happens, um, you know, we're looking at identity crisis here, we're looking at not being able to deal with the pressure, we're looking at, um, you know, pressure from evil society, you know, we're looking at, um, we're looking at, you know, just having some level of influence where you feel that, you know, you can say things and go scot free. You can say things and nobody's going to say anything because it is you. We're looking at a lot of things. We're looking at, you know, upgrading. We're looking at, Moral decision because I mean, yeah. upbringing, upbringing is, is a major issue. If you've been brought up well, there are some certain things that you do that you know that you know what, um, this isn't good, you know what, this is going to affect me, so that's So, I mean, there are a lot of things that contribute to cyberbullying. Yeah. Okay, you're going to say so, Yeah, though you, you mentioned something about um, an influencer or somebody bringing a lot of people together um, to go and just attack one person, and that sounds a lot like peer pressure. Um, so because they are just all rallied together and everybody just wants to go and attack one person because um, there's maybe the dominant person that is making everybody come together. So young people, and this happens quite often, a group of people will come together and attack one person. Yeah, we, we, you know, if it's gone, it's, it's usually like what you see in the playground and the classroom now, it's just mm. social media. Mm. Oh, yeah. and, 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 it, and it's interesting because sometimes you see that they even have WhatsApp groups and then they go, they send the link of the comment and they say, oh, you people should go comment on that this person's post and go tell the person they're not good enough. Go tell the person they're not going to sell probably a business brand or something. And then I'm like, you know, what's going on? You know, what's going on? We need to, you know, 
we need to acknowledge that this is the meanest and we need to continually shed light, you know, to stop this thing because if, if we don't do that, it's going to keep getting worse where it, it sounds like something that is legalized or something that is acceptable, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the parallel and stuff sounds like it's going to be a lot more high with everybody now having access to um, the phone or social media account. Um, we can cause a lot more damage and we can cause a lot more harm than we even think about. Um, because a lot of the times you find that lots of these young people detach themselves. Like it's just a phone. You're hiding. It's, it's mm-hmm. like someone's brain. Hiding behind like your phone mm-hmm. um, or hiding behind like your social media account. Um, and so you're, you're, you're a lot more detached from the person. But... We know that it causes a lot more harm than good. Can you please talk us through some of the effects of social media bullying and cyberbullying? Mm, great. Um, so, yes, yeah, social media bullying, um, cyberbullying, of course, um, I, I want to start with the most obvious one. I mean, um, depression. Yeah. Because depression, and it, it's such that it begins to get different levels to it. You know, effect comes with um, lack of self-confidence. It comes with um, imbalance, and that imbalance will cause a lot of things. I mean, the, the individual starts in school, then you begin to see low grades, or the person is distracted, you're losing focus, you're not able to um, focus. And I mean, so many things, as you as you as you have a lot of appetite, such as you're not able to sleep well, you're in deep thoughts, you're thinking, you can't eat, you can't concentrate. And of course, suicide, suicide, I mean, and some people, I mean, they take this, they take this test and they're not able to um, balance it well. So yeah. that they now even begin to do that for other people. I mean, that, that's just a very few, just a very few things. But I think it play out whereby, it, you know, someone being cyber food, they can't handle it well. And it takes very, very, very drastic approaches to people that do it there. And it's, it, it, I mean, drastic such that they, they, you know, there's this, rebellious rebelliousness in them or they begin to rebel or revenge you know there's this revenge yeah. that comes to them and they're taking drastic um, traffic approaches to find out who, who the thing is that's for people who are unnamed or they yeah. just do something to us them but I mean of course we, we look at um, we look at imbalance psychological imbalance we look at suicide we look at depression we look at um, you know the mental health is, is, is yeah. going to be an issue we look at appetite, not focus, um, you know, and it, of course it is connect between people that are physically present. And this is where this is why I say that, you know, if somebody is going through um you know some level of um, depression or psychological imbalance through um cyberbullying, you know, I mean a lot of them will eventually use and say, oh, this is what happened to me. They just keep it to themselves. So they feel like connect from people, somebody who has a friend, somebody who has playful who has the up and doing, you see that the person is not really um, engaging. You see that there is, there is a low concentration span, attention span, and all of those things that are yeah. affecting that person, you know. Yeah. And if we continually raise, some people don't even talk about it, we just keep it against it. And we continually raise, continually have young people that grow up in such, I mean, if you say that one out of three people have experienced this, that's like you're saying that three percent of the young population, and mm-hmm. you have to put that one of what people look for themselves. They don't feel mm-hmm. enough. I mean, when they eventually, when they eventually do, what else do you expect? I mean, how is it going? I mean, it's, 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 it's a serious thing. It's a serious mm-hmm. thing, and, and I, I really like that you're talking about it. I really like that this conversation is happening. And I mean, people who can listen and say, you know what, I'm, I'm taking a stand against cyberbullying. I'm being more conscious of people around me to say, oh, I've been doing this before. You know, um, you see people try to do business with or something, and people just go, oh, you really can't make it to do business. Why are you here? You know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing, it, it, it could be a long term effect. It could even be a lifelong effect, and the person just totally loses their self confidence. They're not able to do anything. They're not able to even create a better future for themselves, really. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, one thing that's quite prevalent among the young people is that we've seen a lot of, um, challenges with mental health disorders amongst young people. You know, I'm glad that you mentioned a couple of um, a couple of things um, that you know, this, this um, depression, anxiety, um, there's also that self harm where um, a lot of young people are beginning to also harm themselves because you know, like you said, it's it's a lot of pressure for somebody who's young sometimes to process why why you are being mean to me or why you're being rude to me. It's like you begin to ask yourself, do I even deserve it? Why did you do that to me? 
And, you know, not, not everybody is mature to handle such pressure and such negativity, especially for the young mind. It's yes. not always easy for them to handle it because you're in a stage where you're trying to understand yourself, you're trying to understand how you fit into society, you're trying to do well at school, they, you know, there's more than responsibilities for you. And there's yes. uh, the constant negative um, attacks that you're getting from your peers or even from older people. And a lot of young people do suffer with this. So, um, you know, I'm glad that we're even having this conversation because a lot of people need to know that sometimes the things that you say cause more harm than you understand. Um, they're really, really quite detrimental for a lot of people's health out there. And sometimes with young people, too, you see some level of aggression towards the, the people closest to them, like family, friends, the kids become very aggressive, and you don't know what's going on. And next thing you're like, oh, my child has changed, oh, my sister has changed, or my brother has changed, but you don't understand that they're going through a lot of emotional, um, sexual or emotional challenges at that moment. So how can an adult, how can we as people who have young people in our life, how can I know that my friend or my brother or my sister is being bullied? Are there signs for me to see? Um, that somebody that I love is being bullied, like a young person I love. Yes, yes, of course. Um, it, although it takes, it takes, um, their sign. Um, yeah. of course, very visible sign. But then it, it takes, and I, I think that one of the reasons why people are not, because they're not, um, I mean, of course you're busy as, as an adult or as a parent. Yeah. But it takes you to study them and not take them to charge So, for instance, um, people, when, I mean, it, it, it starts from the little things, lots of appetite. The person who mm-hmm. is not eating regularly, um, they're not sleeping well, you know, they, there's a disconnect between you and the person, and you're just thinking, oh, um, you know, it's adult who takes me to them, the thing has changed, doesn't talk to anyone again, doesn't engage, it's growing old, you know. And, and that growing old, it, it has some things that I've contributed to it, or the um, person's change, you know, as, mm-hmm. as, as a lot of things have changed. So you engage in discussions with the person, and you can tell, you can pick, read from the lines of what the person is saying. I was talking to someone um, who's about 16, 17, and then she says, oh, I just want to blow, I just want to be an influencer, and that's how I'm going to make it in life, you know. So I could tell that she was under a lot of pressure, and I said, oh, are you on Instagram? And she said, yes, you know. And I'm seeing about, you know, 500 followers or so, and I'm like, that's, that's quite a lot. I mean, at my age, I wasn't even, I wasn't even on Instagram. You know, so you're saying that you're reading between the lines to see that they are under some certain level of pressure or they are under some certain level of cyber bullying. You know, when they say, or they come to you and say, oh, mom, am I not fine enough? Mm. The shirt's not good. I'm not wearing the shirt again. Probably they wore that shirt and just condemned it and say, well, I'm not doing it. I want to do, when you begin to see that there is a change, I want to, I want to cut my hair this way. I don't want to look this way again. I, I mean, I'm not too big. You know, so, I mean, when you're beginning to notice that there is a level of, um, decrease in their self-confidence, there are lots of appetite. They're not able to focus. You're engaging them and in between the lines, they are, because at the end of the day, in between the lines, they are sharing what they are going through. They might say it as a joke, but then you're being sensitive to say, you know what, about, what does she say to you? Why, why would you eventually say, are you fine? I mean, you've been for the past 18 years, 19 years, and you're asking me, do I look fine enough? You know? So then you say, why would you ask that question? It's just you probing and saying, you're realizing there's some changes, and then you're, because I'm, before, before, um, any, any young person, before anybody commits suicide, there are some signs that they would have exhibited, and you know, that people around them should have been careful of. You see them not talking, you see them deep thoughts, you see them, you see them, you know, they change, they're not eating, they're not talking, they're not focusing, they're not engaging as they should, you know, and you engage in some conversations with them and you hear them say, oh, what is this in this life? You know, and you hear such, um, such words or such sentences and you're not able to say, why would you say that? You know, things trigger all what you say and we need to just be, come to that place where you're conscious of your interaction with people. All right, we we need to. I can tell you that at least in one week, you would get an unkind comment if you post a picture on social media. If you've never been bullied, I think they love you so much. In Nigeria right now, I think Nigerians don't even like the politicians again. So you can't even post a picture and get a kind comment as a politician in this country. But what are the effects of bullying? Perhaps in sixty seconds, if you may. 
can you can just repeat some of the um, statements you made about the effects of the Okay, um, the effects of bullying, of course, um, yeah, we see suicide, we see depression, we see, um, we see an imbalance, we see, um, lots of focus, self-confidence, we see disorders, eating disorders, we see a mental health degradation, mm-hmm. you know, we see that people are not able to, um, connect as much, we see low engagement, low appetite, people are not able to rest, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot right. of, there's just, We'll, we'll come back to the lot. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> Tell us your name and location, please. Go ahead, talk to us. I'm sure you're listening, so we'll respond to that. So he was talking about uh, uh, someone he knows who went online and then there was a change in skin color. And so people online were abusing this person and said, oh, you're bleaching. And this person, because of low self-esteem, maybe decided to drink uh, bleach and sadly passed on. You know, so we, we hear some of these stories almost uh, every now and again. And we're asking that you, the listener, please call in and ask questions in regards to social media bullying and perhaps share an experience with us so we can uh, lead you on the right things to do moving forward. I'll share an experience from a long time ago, say 10 years, maybe. Uh, I was actually in the choir many years ago. And so, you know, choir uniforms now, so most times they are repeated. Yeah. And on one of those days, I think I wore a dark suit, a black jacket of some sort. And I I posted the picture on Facebook, feeling good with myself. And I got one of my classmates sending me a message and saying, uh, you wear these clothes all the time. You repeat these clothes every time. You know, exactly of some sort, I felt very bad. This was a long time ago. I felt very bad. For years, I was not in talking terms with that person. For coming on my Facebook page, you know, to write that kind of a thing when I thought we were friends, you know. So these things happen. And I feel like a lot of persons have at some point been bullied not, not, most times people who do these things do not really have the intentions of, you know, putting you down. They are just in their mind, just commenting, you know. Okay. And I know that there, there are some persons who troll even kids. You post a picture of your baby and they begin to abuse the baby. And I ask myself how we lost touch with humanity to the point where we yeah. see a little baby and we say, your baby is ugly. How dare you do such a thing? You know, and then you wear a shoe and they say ugly shoes. I think it happened with one of the uh, stars from the BB Niger, the previous edition. So you, you keep wearing white shoe all the time. And then they brought different oh. pictures of the poor girl, you know, wearing the white shoes repeatedly. So we see these things happen all the time. If they're not abusing your children, they're abusing what you're wearing. They're abusing your body. What women, are, a lot of persons will call body shaming. You know, and this has led a lot of persons to go under the knife and some did not come out alive. So I want you to, you know, talk to us about this and perhaps advise uh, an individual who's been bullied online. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Great, great. Um, uh, thanks for that question. So, um, of course, it's, the interesting thing is, while you can control it, some things are just out of your control because sometimes you really, you really be people that you know that, you know, would just say these things without, you know, such intention. I mean, while you can block people who put in negative comments, or while you can put in some certain level of filters for plugging your Instagram, if you have, you know, put in some words that say, if your word is going to have such negative, if your comments are going to have such negative words, you know, it won't be allowed. But there are still some things that you really can't, you really can't, um, you really can't negate. So, if, if you've been bullied before, or you've just had such comments that doesn't sit well with you, 
I mean, it, 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 it first comes from a level of internalizing yourself and saying that, you know what, uh, I'm not going to take this thing personally. I'm not going to take this. I'm not going to take this to art. And it's, it's difficult. I was very honest. You know, it's difficult saying, when you see a comment and you're just saying, well, I'm not going to take this to art. I'm going to leave this comment. I'm going to block this person because that doesn't repeat itself. But I mean, even if that's like the most basic solution, saying that, you know what, I'm encouraging you not to take this to art. People will keep talking, you know, knowing that people have their views, knowing that, um, everybody would understand. Everybody wouldn't be like you. Everybody wouldn't talk like you. Everybody would just have such, um, views that are negative. So, coming to that point, I, I, however, it shouldn't be. It's not a case of, you know, accepting that these people are doing the right thing. And that's why, of course, we need laws we need implementation of this law, or this cyber act, cyber crime act. We need implementation of this. So that when people see that, I mean, just one comment can land you in jail for some stuff, or you make things mm. fine, which is reduced. But saying that you're going to control the number of people that um, probably maybe putting your account on private, all of, all of these things. But at the minimum, it's saying that do not take things to heart. Yeah? People comment, know that that's their thing, um, block them if you need to, because block them, do not retaliate, do not, um, you know, that get in the comment section or wherever, you know, just saying that, you know what, um, I'm not taking this view to act, you know. Then, of course, another thing, what happens is people go back to the offending comments, they reread it, and then oh. they just create. So, when you see this, when you see a negative comment, you know, just quiet and do it. Because at the point where you're reading that, then you begin to doubt, you begin to wonder, you know, if this is true or not. You know, so, um, understand that everybody doesn't have the same view. Um, um, also, you know, not internalizing comments. I mean, just taking it as, you know, I'm not gonna take, I'm not gonna act on this, I'm not gonna, um, take offense, you know. And even to people who post comments, you know, there's a 30, 30 second rule where, whereby if you post a comment, you know, go back to 30 seconds and read it. And, and read it and, you know, put yourself in, in the place of whoever you're commenting and say, if I was the one, how would I take it? You know, there's a certain words that you type and you realize that. Or, you know, because, another thing again, because, um, social media or through an electronic means, if you're typing a message, you can't really dictate the tone at which the message is read. Yes. So if you're ever typing a message, you know, when you're typing in news, you're careful to say, oh, this is going to sound this way. So if you're typing a message or whatever you're doing, you know, somebody shares their views and you're writing your own view, be careful to say, um, after 10 seconds, you read it. How does the tone sound like? Is mm. it, is it, is it such that people can read in another tone? If not, if yes, you know, then go back and rearrange your statement. So, but then for people who, who, who have been doing, talk to someone, you know, mm. if you, if it's persistent, talk to someone, um, do not take it to heart, talk to someone if it's persistent. Right. Of course, you need to share. Your mental health is very, very, very We, we, we need to go now, hard. but. For the caller who had called in earlier, you know, to talk about the person okay. who could not uh, take in all the pressure from the comments online and decided to drink uh, one of these uh, bleach, you know, to, to take his or her life. What comments do yeah. you have in response to that? So absolutely, um, I think that, of course, before that happened, it would have, have been a case of repeated people asking, well, what's wrong with your color? And at that point, the person needs to talk to someone. At the point where you can handle it yourself, please talk to someone. Please talk to a psychologist. Please talk to someone. If you need to go off social media or you need to turn up your commenting, please do that. I want you know talk to someone who had this page of um, where some of the people was someone was going ahead to create fake accounts, you know, and then constantly every time in the comment section saying, Oh, I'm going to you know, so she one day she she, she got tired. I thought that she was always turning up her comment. Comments and I said, Well, what's going on? She got tired and posted what the person has been sending to her. As much as the person said, No, I'm going to see you. You think you are smart, you think you are fine. You know, and I'm like, You know, this is an issue. And she went and said, Oh, this is what I'm doing with this people. I can't deal with it anymore. You know, so she took time off, you know, while she was trying to identify with the person. So she took time off, you know, saying, um, Okay, um, I need to talk to someone. So at that point where you realize you can't take it anymore, please talk to someone. If you need to take a break off social media, please to take, take a break for your sanity, for your mental health, because we cannot, we can, while well, we can, we can only control ourselves, this evil do us. What needs, what, what needs to control them is laws that are implemented against the act. So while you might not be able to find out who the person is or do things to the person directly, please make sure that yourself, you know, you're talking to someone and you're, 
regulating your family. But, but do you also think that self-esteem has got something to do with this? First off, not being comfortable in your skin, your color, and then again, because you're trolled, you decide that I need to end this. Well, um, I, I wouldn't say that um, self-esteem has, you know, self-esteem really, um, of course, start up being your self-esteem. But the, another, I don't want to go into the fact that the pressure from social media creates a stereotype that this is how you should look like. Mm. You know, this is how, this is how your body, as a lady, you know, how it should go, it shape. Mm. And that pressure, because you see all the celebrities or you see all the people that you look up to, even people who don't even have so much color, you see that shape and you're like, okay, this is how a perfect shape should be. This is how a perfect skin color should be. So that pressure creates a stereotype to say, this is, this is how things should be. All right. Of course, we so, um, self-esteem, of course, but then, um, whatever is going to happen, you know, even if you have very high self-esteem or low self-esteem, um, of course, I understand, I mean, if it, this is now a, a question of saying, do not let the pressure get to you to use your self-esteem. And then this type of bullying as well. Be able to talk to someone who cannot handle the pressure. Thank you very much. Apologies okay. for inability to take any further calls on the show. It's 8.40 a.m. We're out of time and we need to go right now. We must thank you very much. Youth Development Advocate, Director Way Network Africa, Oni Oni, all the way from Lagos. Thank you very much for being a part of the show this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Cheerio, go, Dancy. Before we go, we'd like to get your last comments and uh, give us the numbers to call for clinical support as well as the email to reach you on any time. Okay. So the number for you to call and for psychological support is 0706-062-5054. I'll repeat that again. 0706-062-5054. And the easiest way to get hold of us is on social media, um, Mean Sanctuary on Instagram. So it's M-E-E-M-S-A-N-C-T-U-A-R-Y, Mean Sanctuary. Just send us a DM and we will respond. And for the young person out there who is who's being bullied, and you know, my last words for you, I think um, our guest speaker has said so much. Um, for me, it's also for you to also remember that the person who's typing this thing is... What the comments that are being said is not necessarily about you, but more about the person who's sending it. Um, so if that could be with you in your mind, that it's not even about you to start with. It's just about the person behind the phone and the person who's typing the message. Mm. All right, then. There you have it.